Hey everybody, I'm Rex Bear. How the heck are you? Beautiful day today out here in Southern Colorado. You can see the leaves changing color, the clouds are coming in, and we have a legend amongst legends. So Micah, I gotta say, man, you're the one that introduced me to the astro theological aspect in the scriptures. And I know there's mm -hmm. been people before you like Jordan Maxwell and, and that mm -hmm. guy that I'm not gonna say his name that have done a really good job like decoding a lot of that stuff. But the way that you bring it together um, I, I'm really impressed with it. And I'm glad I have an opportunity to speak with you again today. So folks, we're actually going to get into several Sumerian tablets, three of them in particular. And Micah has this key that he uses to decode a lot of these scriptures and tablets and cuneiform, all the, like the, the Gnostic texts, the, the Christian scriptures, so many of them. It's quite fascinating. And, and today, the three tablets in particular um, and you can actually read these yourselves if you go to Oxford Sumerian website, ETCSL. These are some of the oldest tablets, some of the oldest stories we have access to. And the first one we're going to get into today is called Dumazid's Dream. Then we're going to talk about Gilgamesh and Kidu and Ki and the, or I'm sorry, Gilgamesh and Kidu and the Netherworld. And then the final one is going to be for today is going to be Gilgamesh and the Bull of Heaven. Are you concerned about the economy? Rightfully so. I know a lot of people that are. Be prepared, not scared. There's one asset that stands the test of time. That's gold. For centuries, gold has been a hedge against inflation, volatility, and economic instability. With the gold IRA from Noble Gold Investments, you can harness the power of precious metals to help protect your financial future. By rolling over your existing IRA or 401k into a self-directed gold IRA, you can enjoy the potential for long-term growth and stability. Diversify your portfolio with a tangible asset that has real value. Setting up your gold IRA has never been easier with Noble Gold Investments and LeapProjectGold.com. Its streamlined process and expert guidance makes it smooth and simple. This election year, don't let election volatility and uncertainty keep you up at night. Vote for the timeless safety of gold and silver in 2024. When you convert your 401 or IRA through Noble Gold Investments, if you qualify, you will be gifted this beautiful solid silver 10 ounce American flag bar behind me. Or if you prefer, you can get these limited edition Trump rounds. 10 of these, total of 10 ounces. Your choice, give them a call, 1-877-646-5347. And let's get back to the podcast right now. The Bowl of Heaven. Yeah, see, the thing about the bull of heaven is, the thing about the, well, first of all, what is the bull of heaven? It's Taurus, right? Oh, Taurus, I would think. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the bull of heaven. That's Taurus. It's one of the zodiac signs. Um, the third tablet that we're going to do um, is very short, and they're very, they're missing a lot of lines and words, and there's question marks all over it, but I still found a pattern. Um, so how do we want to start this? Well, let's just get our organic popcorn. And if you have an organic beverage or something that you'd like to uh, accompany for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will. And I'm looking yeah, forward to it, man. I'm, oh. You ever have one of these? They're, they're, they're uh, aspartame and. No aspartame. Oh. Shut no up. aspartame. Aspartame free. Oh, good. It's uh, flavored sparkling water. Oh. It's, it tastes like a. It tastes like an orange soda, but it's. It's got bubbles in it, but there's cool. no ass game. Oh, okay. It apparently makes you taste sweeter too, so maybe oh. you should get one of these. Okay, cool. I'll have to try one out, man. Especially mm -hmm. if it has FDC 40 in it. That stuff's the best. <laughs> Just joking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, Micah, you have screen share permission, and let's go, man. Let's rock and roll. All right, hold on. Folks, have you got your copy yet of End of the Rabbit Hole? Through Amazon, eight book series so far. Get the whole set and subscribe to Micah's YouTube channel, Micah Dank Truth Bombs. Thank you. All right. Let's do this. Now, Rex, you know how every time I come on your channel, I give you the cipher. I go over the 12 zodiac signs and give you the cipher. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do that once now. I'm going to okay. do that now. Okay. And then I'm going to do the other three tablets, but I'm not going to do it again. I'm only going to do it once at the beginning of this episode. Good. All right, because I don't want to have to keep repeating that. Anyway, so let's start 
Dumazid's dream. First of all, before we even get into that, who was Dumazid and what was his dream? Do we even know any of that stuff? Yeah, Dumazid is Anana's lover. Dumazid is a great king in ancient Sumer. Dumazid has often been referred to as the great shepherd or the great fisherman. Dumazid is on the Sumerian king list that's available that has 281,000 years allegedly of kingship and it has many. I years. thought it was 432,000. That's a different one. The one that that's actually from uh, a Greek philosopher that did 10 kings in 432,000 years. And I think that's more symbolic of the 432 and the 10 keys, 10 keys, 432, 432 hertz, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the Sumerian, the ancient Babylonian king list that has um, the first four or five kings ruling for like 40 plus that one of the kings actually rules for 40,000 years. So they, that's 281,000 years. That one. Gotcha. Is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's start. So this is pulled up, right? I'm going to teach you guys the Zodiac, the 12 signs of the Zodiac, the story behind them and the keywords that represent each one of them. What we're then going to do is with that list of keywords, which I don't expect you to remember off the top of your head, but as I'm going through and showing you, this is this, this is this, you can be like, yeah, he did say that. Yeah, that does connect. So let's go over the, okay. Let's start with Aquarius. The first sign I talk about is Aquarius, which is represented by the man. Now, technically, Aries begins the beginning of the year, but I start with Aquarius because that's kind of near our new year. Um, and the story goes back to the story of Zeus and the young boy. That's the story of Aquarius. Now, Zeus and the young boy. Zeus saw a 14-year-old blonde boy on Earth, and he wanted him on Mount Olympus with him. But... The boy's father wouldn't give it to him. So Zeus bargains with him after a while. And then eventually he's allowed to take the boy up. The boy comes up and he starts serving everyone, just like in this picture, um, something called ambrosia out of that picture, which was the nectar of the gods. And he does this for like a very long time. And he just finally gets sick of it. So he goes to the edge of heaven and he pours it over. That's what you're seeing in this picture right here. Now that pouring over of the nectar uh, caused the flood on Earth. That's where the Greeks get their flood story from. Now, anyway, Zeus saw that and saw the destruction and was mad for a minute or a while because Zeus is Zeus is a very rough, difficult god. You know, he wasn't the, he wasn't he wasn't that good all the time, and he usually gets really angry. And one, he instead of getting angry at the kid. What he did was, in a moment of self-revelation and self-reflection, Zeus was like, you know what? I shouldn't have brought the boy up. He was a little young. He did this, that. So what he does is, instead of punishing him, he immortalizes him as the constellation Aquarius, which is this. So that's the story. Anyway, so the key words for this picture right here, look at the picture. Son of man and man, because Aquarius is the sign of the man, whereas Virgo is the sign of the woman. Baptism, because this is how you baptize someone. What you do is you just, you know, you put a child under there or a confused adult and uh, you baptize them. That's how you baptize them. Water pitcher, because this is a water pitcher. Fountain, because the Greek fountain statues were built like this. Stream, river, pond, lake, ocean, sea, just water bodies. Now, Aquarius is an air sign in astrology, but because there's water in the picture, that's how they used it. They used it with a man and with water. So what they basically did was that's how they encoded things. Now, the interesting thing about Pisces is Pisces is actually a water sign, and it's a sign of the two fish in the water. So stream, river, pond, lake, sea, ocean. So basically what I'm telling you is the first two are basically water, right? But how do you know which water? How do you know which one it is? Well, in Pisces, it would be like he swam with the fish in the river. Whereas in Aquarius, it would say something like, he drank from the water skin or something to that effect. So those two are water. Then Aries is the ram. And in Aries, we have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12 hour day and a 12 hour night. It's also the Passover or the passing over of the sun over the equator. And back on the summer solstice. Now, that is the astrotheological Passover. The Jewish Passover is when the angel of death passes over all the houses in Egypt, supposedly, and anyone that doesn't have the lamb's blood. Again, a lamb is a baby ram, guys. So why, why is it important to put the lamb's blood on the door? 
Well, because they're identifying themselves as the Jews, the people of Aries, the ram. And that's why they blow the ram's horn during the holidays. Uh, and in Christianity, the passing over is changed and it becomes the resurrection of God's son. So there's three different types of Passovers. And you celebrate the resurrection of God's son in Aries, don't you? Um, the first, what is it? The first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. That's when you celebrate Easter, the resurrection. And it's the same way every year because it's astrology based. So whenever you hear ram, lamb, shepherd, or ram's horn, that's Aries. Taurus is the bull, the bull of heaven. When you look at the sky and you see Taurus during the season where it's supposed to be, you know that you need to put the plow on the bull so that you can plant the seeds so you can harvest in Virgo and Libra, which we'll get to. So whenever you hear bull, ox, calf, or cow, that's Taurus. Gemini is the twins, Castor and Pollux Troy, whose sister was Helen of Troy, the story of Achilles. This is another Greek story. Anyway, so Gemini is the twins, right? So whenever you hear twins or brothers... That's talking about Gemini. Cancer is the crab, and it's the sideways moving creature. So I'll show you with this. The sun on December 25th is going to rise a degree on its axis. On the 26th, another degree. On the 27th, another degree. So every single day, the sun rises a degree. And what that means is the sun gets higher in the sky, right? And the higher up it is, the more land the sun can cover, the hotter it gets. Okay, because in winter, the sun is super close to you. Um, so it rises every day. Now, when it hits June 21st, that's the summer solstice. That's its height. The sun does not rise any higher than that. And then, and then for three consecutive days after, it's not going to rise a degree or lower a degree. It's going to stay at that same exact height for three days, just like the crab walking sideways. It's a metaphor. So... <clears throat> The crab in the ancient Egyptian times was known as the scarab. Um, so whenever you hear crab or beetle, that's cancer. Leo is the king, the lion, the king of the jungle, the what king about of the mountain. Sea. Let's go back. What about mountain? For where? How how would mountain would mountain be connected to cancer because it's the like the top of the zodiac? That makes sense. Uh, I can explain that. It's actually Capricorn at the bottom. But I don't use that because it's a little harder to explain to people. I try and just share with people obvious things. I don't get too deep into it unless it's uh, – unless everybody has been doing this as long as I have basically. But you'll see. I'll show it to you. Okay. Because there's been a lot of symbolism connected to the mountains, three mountains three especially. Mountains. And not only with like Freemasonry but also Mormonism – there's a lot of Mormon businesses that will have the connection as well. And we all know about the, um, the connections of Freemasonry and Mormonism as far as just some of the symbolism goes. But uh, it's quite mm -hmm. remarkable. It's quite fascinating. Actually, what would be really fun, I'm just going to divert here for a second, then we'll get back to this. You and I need to go to Utah, and we need to go to the temples and decode all the astrology with the signs on the temples because it is chuck full of astrological and uh, astrological symbolism, it's remarkable. I would do that. That'd be your. That'd be right up your alley, bro. That'd be amazing. That would. That would. I could read it like a freaking book. Um, I'll get back to the mountains, though. I promise. So back to Leo. Um, the ruling planet of Leo is actually the sun. So the sun is home in Leo, the king. That's why the son of God is king. So whenever you hear lion, lioness, or cub. That's Leo. Virgo is the woman holding, or the virgin holding the wheat stalk. Remember before when I said that you plant in Taurus? Well, the virgins would cultivate the wheat in Virgo in order to make the bread for the year. So whenever you hear virgin, wheat, grain, seed, barley, corn, grainy things, that's Virgo. Libra is the justice, the scales, the balance, the just one. The reason it's the justice is because it's going to judge God's son as it passes over the fall equinox and begins its descent into winter into cold into death. Well, it technically passes under the fall equinox. See, it's heralded in the spring, right? In the spring, you have Passover, Easter, all the Passovers and everything. Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, it's being sentenced to death in Libra because it's going to now become cold in the Northern Hemisphere. 
Um, Libra is also wine season, which is when you plant for the grapes in Taurus, you could press the wine here. And it's also olive oil season. So the three things, law, wine, olives. So law, judge, justice, the just one, divorce, marriage, court, wine, vineyard, wine press, olive oil or olive oil. That's all Libra. Scorpio is the scorpion and he is the betrayer. When a scorpion bites you, it leaves an imprint in your skin that looks like a pair of lips. It's why the mafia has the kiss of death. That's where they get it from. And it's why Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. So the son is going to be judged in Libra with the scales, betrayed in Scorpio. Finally in Sagittarius, this is where the bow and the arrow shoot the sun and inflict further punishment on the sun. This is where the sun dies. Why? Because on December 21st, the sun is at its lowest point. It cannot rise any lower. It's dead. It's the beginning of winter. It remains at that lowest level for three days. So they used to say God's sun was dead on December 21st because it wouldn't even crack the horizon. It's going to walk sideways like the crab for three days there. And then it's going to come back to life December 25th, which is the birth of every God. Is December 25th. This is why. Because the sun wakes up and starts to walk north again to make its way to the summer solstice. So whenever you hear horse, bow and arrow, spear, or horseman, that's Sagittarius. Now Capricorn, I mean, sorry, Capricorn is the goat. And if you look at the zodiac wheel here, Rex, Capricorn's at the bottom. And if you put a little sun at the bottom of the zodiac wheel, and you march it to the left, indicating it's rising a degree a day, all the way to its height in Cancer, it starts to climb up the great mountain of the zodiac in Capricorn. And the reason Capricorn is a goat is because no animal climbs the mountain better than goats. So if you were to say mountain, I would tell you Capricorn. So those are the 12 signs. And those are the key words. I don't expect you to remember them, but I'm going to show you how this works, people. Rex, do you have any questions? Yeah, so Capricorn is the mountain then, not Cancer? No, the mountain, Capricorn. I know what you're. I know what you're trying to say, but the, the mountain starts at the bottom and it goes to the top. Okay. The goats climb the mountain, so yeah. Capricorn is associated with the mountain. Um, so let me show you how this works. Why is this so big? Hold on. Why? Did, let me change this. Hold on. Oh, that's much better. Okay. So. You're not going to be able to see this, guys, but if you were to get my PowerPoints, because I do sell them, um, I have the – this isn't like scripture, okay, where, you, where it tells you verse, page, number, letter, word. This is uh, – it just tells you the lines of the tablet. So the first one that I found was 5 to 14. The second one was 26 to 39, but I'll just read it to you. O crabs of the river grieve, in ancient times the shepherd lay down. Then 26 to 39 is twin reads, water was poured. My holy drinking cup was torn down. An owl took a lamb from the sheep house. My rams were scratching the earth. No milk was poured. Then 56 to 69, that your male goats were dragging their dark beards. The evil hated by men, a river barge. May your dog devour me, the black dog, shepherd dog, your noble dog, and your lordly dog. Who eat no fish? They offered her a field of grain. Please change my hand into gazelle, and then it has, uh, in parentheses, it says, it has instead snake. So I think what they were trying to do with that is they didn't know if it was a gazelle or a snake. I'm not really sure. But if I now read you what I just read you guys, and you remember the keywords that I told you, the crab is Cancer. The river is Pisces. The shepherd is Aries. Pisces and Aries are connecting signs. The twin is Gemini. Gemini and Cancer are connecting signs. The milk is the Milky Way galaxy, which center is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius and Gemini are opposing signs. The goat is Capricorn. Capricorn and Sagittarius are connecting signs. Capricorn and Cancer are opposing signs. The dogs are both Canis Major, which is in Cancer, and Sirius the Dog Star, which is also in Cancer. 
The fish is Pisces. The grain is Virgo. Virgo and Pisces are opposing signs. The snake is Ophiuchus, which sits between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Well, it's technically not Ophiuchus. It's actually serpent, S-E-R-P-E-N-S, which is the snake of Ophiuchus. Because Ophiuchus is a man holding a basket and there's a snake in it. It's the serpent handler. But serpents is the snake itself. Okay, so the cup is crater, which borders Leo. So out of all the zodiac signs I gave you, just from these from this one tablet, the only missing signs we have are Aquarius, Taurus, Libra, and Scorpio. And technically, yeah, that would keep the river as Pisces. Yeah, missing signs, Aquarius, Taurus, Libra, and Scorpio. So this is a, what, six, 7,000-year-old tablet? And it's got eight of the 12 Zodiac signs in it. That's not a coincidence, Rex. No, it's not. And actually that last line or the last lines, 192 through 199, please change my hands into gazelle. He's actually, that's Dumazid calling to Utu to do that. Utu is the sun itself in ancient Sumerian um, teachings. Utu is the new sun god, the new sun deity. Before that, it was Shamash. Shamash, I think, actually might be Saturn or Saturn when it could have been activated as a brown star, if that's even uh, possible. But Shamash, I definitely think, is connected to Saturn. Utu is. Well, the- was it Shamash or Shemesh? Because they basically mean the same thing, but they are different. Well, it's spelled S H A M A S H, Shamash. Shamash. You know what Shamash is? It's in the Teflon. Well, it's beyond that. It's, it's 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 a Jewish thing too. Yeah, yeah, um, oh yeah, yeah. Tell me about it, because because so you have the, you have the menorah, right? Yeah, the menorah. You have, you have the menorah, which is supposed to be uh, eight days, plus one in the front. Now, what you do when you light the menorah is you take the one that's in the front, and you light that, and then you take that one. It's called the shamash. It's the it's representing the sun because what you're going to do is you're going to take the one that's at the head of it. And you're going to take it out, and you're going to light all the rest with them. So this is basically, it's the sun and lightning things. That's freaking cool. And there you go. Shamash, the sun, ancient Sumer, Shamash was the sun god. And you know what? There's a menorah on a petroglyph in Siberia that's dated to be at least 7,000 years old. And the in the petroglyph, it has a menorah at the front. And then to the left of it, it has what looks like some... Um, it has what looks like a, a ladder, which could be considered Jake or, or a big tree, like the Norse mythology of the tree. Um, then it has some characters on the right side of it that look like Norse characteristics. But it also has what the Hopi use now as the circle with the four quadrants and the four dots. Mm-hmm. All of those. Do you know, if it was a, is it a, is it a, is it a <sighs> I'll show you. Is it a, okay. Either is it, is it um, nine candles or is it seven? It's, because the, the menorahs are different. Well, this looks exactly like the menorah. I'll show you. Um, Siberia petroglyph. 10,000 year old Siberian petroglyph. Yeah, I did a podcast on it. Um, looks like a combination of the squatter man and the menorah. Uh, here we go. This is it. I want Squatter to see Man. this. Squatter Man's a petroglyph that's been seen around the world and uh, for thousands of years. And theory is everybody saw it at the same time, and they they etched it in stone because it was such a, a powerful force. But this is a yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, this is a seven. This is a seven one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is actually not Judaism at all. Um, it's the similar thing, but it's not. So Jesus, dude, it looks identical to the menorah. It does, but it's missing too. And no, and you'll also so you'll notice the tree of life, the four, the four dot shield. You'll see to the right what looks like um, Nordic almost, or like mm-hmm. Icelandic, you know, Slavic. As I say that right, and then underneath mm-hmm. them you got three characters, and then to the right of them you have three larger characters and one regular sized. Which bro, is, these are like freaking Wendigos. Really interesting. The symbolism and the fact that this is 7,000 years old in Russia and these symbols are seen around the world. Mm -hmm. 
So the, you're saying the menorah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, has the same amount. Well, this one. No, nope, look at that one. True. So how come? How come this one only has seven? It has to do with how deep the level of Judaism you are. Okay. <laughs> That's what it basically boils down to. Okay. Your, your, your level, uh, how how into it you are. Yes. Uh, uh, eight. Well. <sighs> Yeah, because here's the nine as your reference. Yeah, the nine is the standard one because there's eight days of Hanukkah. The nine is the standard. And in the middle, you see that? Yep. The star. Okay, that, that's the shamash. Oh, the star is the shamash. Okay, oops. No, 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 no. Go up, go up, go up. Go back to it. Right here. Right there, yeah. above it. The, the light above the... Yeah, the star that. on this one right here. Think this, right? Above that, above that, the light, the one in the middle. That's oh. the shamash. Okay, so the Star of David is below the The Star light. of David, what you're looking at with the Star of David is a hermaphrodite. That's what you're yeah. looking at. It's the male, mixing female. of the male and female energies. Yeah, like you can see hermetic principles doing the same thing in ancient hermetics and the occult and um, like through tarot. They have tarot of the hermaphrodite. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So I, I wonder why, I wonder why this one has, so what happened there? Like I, I understand what you said but there's, I'm sure there's more to it than, than just that. I'm sure there is too. I never cared enough to look that deep into it. I just know that they have a seven one and they have a nine one. That's a job for you, bro. Come on. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get you that answer. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Um, but yeah, do you want to go, should, let's go back to the, I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I want to tell everybody who's listening something. Do, do a screen. The, is, the one that I just did right now was a Sumerian tablet. And I want you to know that this was my seventh Sumerian tablet that I've broken down with astrotheology. And all I, I keep texting Rex, and I'm like, Rex, that ETC website sucks. Just give me the titles. Give me some titles of, of tablets. And every time I touch one, I find this stuff. So let's go to another one, and I'll show you this pattern everywhere. So which one are we doing now, Gilgamesh and the Bull or Gilgamesh and Enkidu? No, we, should, we should do Gilgamesh, and Enkidu, and the Netherworld because just as far as uh... – you know, first we do the dream, then we do the netherworld, then we do the heavens. I like that vibe. Okay, so the netherworld. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read this to you. Just give me a sec. Hold on. I can already Again, I'm not going over the 12 signs again. In all heads. Again... The the, uh, the lines for the tablet are numbered. So 1 to 26. The waves at the bow of the boat rose to devour the king like wolves, and the waves at the stern of the boat were attacking Enki like a lion. A woman, respectful of An's words, was walking along. At its root, a snake immune to incantations made itself a nest. The keel of Enki's little boat was trembling. You should not anoint yourself with fine oil from a bull. Did you see him who had two sons? He sits on a couple of bricks eating bread. He drinks water from a saddle water skin. His heart rejoices like a man who has four asses to yoke. He is as cheerful as a plowman. He sits on, the thro on a throne and listens to judgments. <clears throat> he drinks the water offered to him. He twitches like an ox, laden with honey and ghee. So the boat is a constellation called Argo. And again, I'm not making these up. What you're going to do, if you're interested in doing this, is you're going to look up Ptolemy's list of uh, in 150 AD, Ptolemy's list of the 48 constellations they knew at the time, because they didn't know all 88. They only knew 48. So what you're going to do is you're going to get to know the 48 and then you can pick it out like this. So the Argo is one of them. It's the boat and it goes from cancer to Scorpio. Um, whenever they talk like, like Argo from like Jason and the Argonauts, the story is about the boat Argo, which goes from cancer to Scorpio. And its story is because after Scorpio comes Sagittarius, which is where the Milky Way river is. So what it is, is this big boat that comes from Cancer to Scorpio is a big boat, and then it sails down the Milky Way River, and that's where these stories come from. 
So the wolf is lupus, which borders Libra and Scorpio. The lion is Leo. The woman is Virgo. The snake is serpents, the snake of Ophiuchus, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn. That's how big it is. The oil is Libra. Remember the olive oil? I told you the olives in, uh, in Libra. Yeah. The two sons are Gemini. The bread is Virgo, the lady with the wheat stalk. The waters from a water skin is Aquarius. The four asses are Acellus Borealis, which is in Cancer. Acellus Borealis is known as the donkey. The judgment is in Libra. The water is Aquarius, the ox is Taurus, and the honey comes from the beehive cluster, which is in Cancer. So this one, Rex, has 11 of the 12 zodiac signs. 11. It's only missing Aries. They never mentioned a sheep. They never mentioned a ram, a shepherd. That is the only one missing. This, this tablet is... I've been looking for 12 out of 12, and this is as close as it gets to me this is as close as it's ever gotten this is how they do it and this is another example so what can we what else can we talk about uh regarding this one is there anything you want to share regarding the actual story or yeah well let's let's get into it for a minute then so if you go to 2735 a woman respectful of on's words was mm -hmm. on where do you put on in the zodiac or the celestial will here where do we, where's that key? Well, if you look at this 27 to 35, a woman, so the woman is Virgo. Well, the Virgo is the only woman sign in the Zodiac. Respect a little on's words. I'm not really sure. I didn't look that deep into it. This, this, I'm looking for these key words. Because so on, not usually, okay, right? let me just jump in real quick. Sorry to interrupt. On is the father of the Anunnaki. He is okay. the, the very first Anunnaki that are referenced in the Sumerian tablets is on. On's. And on is oftentimes referred to as Uranus. Sometimes, really? Yes. So um, Enki is oftentimes referred to in, in the planetary realms as Saturn. I think. Doesn't Saturn eat Uranus? No, Saturn uh, Saturn castrates Uranus. And then, <laughs> gotta be careful how we say this, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, castrates. Uranus and then Saturn, Kronos starts to eat his children because um, not and and because not only for like longevity but also because of fear that one of his children will become greater than he is. And so, if you look at it astrologically, if we go back at a time when when the, like our, these planetary alignments started unfolding and maybe Saturn got so close to Jupiter that it caused some serious um, retribution. But you see, you see every time I come on just how important the heavens were to them. This is my 75th book that I've broken down, including the Bible, Sumerian works, Babylonian works, Egyptian texts, uh, Gnostic texts, the Book of Mormon, the Quran. They can all be broken down the same way. Well, and what's interesting is, though, is it seems as if, yeah, like the what is the connecting point? It's the stars. It's the heavens. It's the gods. Were the original gods, the planets, the stars, the constellations, or were mm -hmm. the original gods actually, you know, um, anthropomorphic beings, human-like, but with super capabilities? Or were there both? Like, yeah, can't they be both? I would think that there could be both. And so, but a lot of these stories that we read in, in mythology now, when people take them literal, as you've brought up in just about every podcast, it, you got to be careful to take these things literal. Because even the Greeks, um, there's been recent discoveries of Greek scholars during the time Greek was the hegemony, like the, the top of the, the civilization apex, basically, if you were going to look at it that way. But they were, uh, one, of the, one of the scholars was like, you know, Zeus doesn't really do this stuff. This is... He was talking about what they were describing Zeus as, as being like Thanos or, you know, one of these superheroes out there. Right. Reality. Um, they, like, so even they knew then that these stories oftentimes were just stories. And, and people now are oftentimes raised to believe that, well, the Greeks really believed what we're reading about that story then. Maybe some of them did. But it was like. It's one of my favorite quotes, Rex, is from John Dominic Crisson. And he says, it's not that those ancient people wrote stories 
literally and were now smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they wrote them symbolically and were now dumb enough to take them literally. Good analogy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, I meant to bring this up to you before we do the third tablet. Um, what, what do you think? Didn't, didn't they say they might have found Gilgamesh's tomb or something? You heard that story coming around? What's going on with that? Oh, it's been around for since 2000, the early 2000s, actually. And there is some research that went back before 2003 where they said they found something. And then soon at like possibly a body like Gilgamesh or something. And then shortly after that disappeared. And then it was the Iraq war that was all over the news. And so people have speculated that had something to do with it. Now that footage that people claim is an Anunnaki and is Gilgamesh that's going around that video footage that's been around for at least 10 years where the guy inside's like blue and people mm -hmm. are like, Oh, that's really him, man. Get a grip. First of all, if you look at the actual tomb itself, it looks like something you could put together at uh, a Walmart and uh, what would be like a, a hobby store out there? What's a big hobby store name? Like Dick Sporting Goods? No, like Michaels. Oh, oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 Michaels. Yeah, like, you know, you go buy your Christmas ornaments and then stuff like that. It looks like that's what it was put together. First of all, the tombs that you see where they have 10,000 pounds, no, 10... It was more than that even, I think 30,000 pounds or something. Just the lid on some of these granite sarcophaguses, like these black granite sarcophaguses that are way deep under these pyramids mm -hmm. that they find. And and then they go, like, then you see the news, like, well, well you know what they did was they, they took it out. And they, 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 there's this liquid in it. So they just dumped it out on the road for everybody. Yeah. And then they found these, like, you know, remains of these animals in there and stuff. And that's all that it was. I mean, so, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. A hundred thousand pound granite sarcophagus perfectly lined up beneath the pyramids just to bury an ox. That totally really? makes sense. And then we're going to yeah. dump that out on the road. Yeah. OK. Now, that listen, you know how bad the, the Museum of Natural History is destroying giant artifacts. That's all they do. I, I, it's insane. dude. It's, it's insane. I need to research that more. But my point is, if you were to if you were to pull a body um, like Gilgamesh would probably be in something similar to that. Like, a, you know, a hundred thousand pound. I don't, I'm not buying it. I'm not, I don't. First you think all, the reason that they, they kind of were shady with the whole thing was because if Gilgamesh was actually real here, then that changes everything. No, no. Okay. I think that, I think that maybe if they got his DNA and if he, if, if he did have certain abilities to like regenerate or superhuman type capabilities, what we might look at as godlike, we would definitely want to take that DNA and, and, you know, go with it, create a super, a superhuman, a super species out of it is, is what mm -hmm. I would say. But there's, there's so many possibilities. Mm hmm but the ones that they showed us footage of where there's that blue guy in there, and then he opens his eyes and he was like, <laughs> that's so BS, man. So BS. Uh, yeah. So we're okay. So let's go back. Let's go back to this. To your, are we on the next one now? Do you want to go back to this one? Hold on. No, we can go to the next one. If That's good. Let's go to the next one. Okay. What do you All think right. the netherworld is though? Netherworld. I don't know, but I recently I, I, I heard that um do you know what Nibiru means in Sumerian? The crossing. The crossover. It's the, the next, over. it's the next it's the next realm. It's not here. Nibiru is not a planet. It's the next realm. They were talking metaphorically, like everybody has, and then the problem is is that the rest of society takes it literally. Nibiru means to cross over. It's the it's you can think about like the river sticks, the coins in the eyes. You could think about all that. They're preparing them for the next life. That's what it is. So Nibiru, I always heard the crossing, but the crossover, cross like that's, that makes sense. Now there's a 3,600 year timeline associated with this crossover. So there mm -hmm. must be some physical interaction with something. And the ancient Sumerian king list, that's 281,000 years. It is missing some time. 
that describes in detail the gods and the and the floods and the kings that ruled after the floods and how the the kingship was handed down by the gods by the Anunnaki. One thing that's really important to them is in these SARS, these thirty six hundred year cycles. So the mm. question is, why? They say it's. What is the story, Rex? The story is that you have. Um, I'm trying to think of how to put this. So you have the sun, and then you have all the planets at different rotational speeds. Some twist this way, some twist this way, but they all go around this way. The idea is that Nibiru comes from here, right? It comes from it comes in an elongated thing around around the sun. That's every thirty six hundred years that it comes back. So so to speak. But story for people who don't know how broke up a little bit there so there's the metaphorical aspect and then some people believe it's the physical aspect you no know, there probably is a binary star maybe a trinary um some people have theories of like that are that are kind of elaborate but i i could definitely see there being a binary system, uh, but would it create death and destruction similar to what people think about Nibiru? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, and I don't think it's a 3,600 year cycle because there's not enough evidence available to suggest that there's this 3,600 year cycle with a associated star or planetary body, but it could be like a solar flare or, or something. And I, I just, you know they've had, they've hidden so much information for so long that I just question everything now. It's it's really mm -hmm. tough to to know. Um, yeah, but the stars are a, a pretty pretty good start. I'd rather come off being skeptical for everything that I learn yeah. than just yeah. believing everything because someone told me to. Me too. Oh, big time, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, well, cool. Let's let's get into the next one, man. I think we got one more. Yeah, Who's we this? do. Cool. Hold on. Deep thoughts, not down by the river. Well, this one is really short. I don't have to. I'll just read it, okay? Yeah, cool. That works. So this is Gilgamesh and the Bull of Heaven. Okay. Okay. Now, remember what I told you. These are three. I printed these out, and they were three half pages long. And look question mark, one line unclear, missing this, dot, 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 dot. Like this whole thing is just, they, they didn't, it just, it wasn't in good shape when they decoded it or when they translated it. However, in this, my king in the river, my lord, my wild bull, I wish to catch mountain sheep to fill up the sheepfolds. There are many repeating lines in these ancient Sumerian texts. For example, Rex, I'll give you an example, because I don't highlight everything. Maybe it will muddy the waters and will leave gigantic cowpats, but I let my father give me the bull of heaven. Gilgamesh. Now, they repeat that a couple of times, and, and a lot of these ancient texts, they, they repeat things to, I guess, drill you in, or maybe because writing hadn't... It's so... Just like with lyrics, they've got the main lyrics where you will repeat over and over and over again. Well, now imagine take these stories and turn it into a song. And if you if you could figure out their dialect and their ancient cultures and customs enough, I'll bet you you would get a, a match. That's wild. I'll have to look at this. It's that. a musical. It's a musical. It's a play. Well, humanity gives credit to the first play slash musical at Great City Dionysus in Greek. That's way after the Sumerians. Yeah. But then again, they could be lying too. They could just be wrong. It's not maybe not they're maybe they're not even lying. They just that's the you know, that's their information. Right. It's so compartmentalized. And it makes it so much harder. Well, this was kind of strange. Not really sure what happened with the recording there, but it started glitching out. So I guess it's not meant to be. If you want to listen to more content, and I'm sure you do, check us out over on Patreon at theproject.com. I hope you have a beautiful day. Hit the bell, share this out, and get a change you want to see everybody. Bye.